Hi, and welcome to the Treasure of the Valley. I'm your host, Sunny Dawn, and today's treasure is an organization called GMO Free Idaho. And today I have with us uh, Jenny and Leslie. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So um, today we're going to learn a little bit more about GMOs. And um, how did you first get involved with, um, with this topic? Well, both Jenny and I actually watched documentaries. Uh, for me, it was The Future of Food. Uh, Jenny mm -hmm. watched Food, Inc., and that was the first time that we had ever heard the term GMO, mm -hmm. which stands for Genetically Modified Organisms. Mm -hmm. And we were both very shocked um, that we had never heard of this term and that we'd been eating them since 1996. Mm -hmm. And we were also very let down by our regulating agencies and um, actually appalled to see the power that certain companies have over our seed supply. And so we both started doing online activism and educating ourselves and doing research. And we met through two organizations, uh, the Organic Consumers Association and the Institute for Responsible Technology. We were working with them to learn how to become uh, GMO activist leaders. And they got Jenny and I in touch, and we started this group. So Wonderful. So how long ago was that? Well, it's a year this month, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, okay. that we launched GMO Free Idaho. It was about two years ago that we learned about right. GMOs. Okay. Separately, we didn't know each other. so. Yeah, I, I remember hearing about it. Actually, um, I went to Colorado State, and um, they do a lot of work there with uh, funding from Monsanto. And mm -hmm. so the one, that's when I first heard about it. Um, so you guys are looking out for our health, the health of the people here in Idaho. Yeah, when, um, when I first watched the documentary, I'm, I was floored and I was mad that, um, that it wasn't um, made available, the information wasn't made available to me, um, that it wasn't on our food labels. And so I, I really felt a responsibility to try to make sure other people knew about it um, and, and that it wouldn't be kept the the industry secret. Mm -hmm. so. so what what are the um, specific foods that you find GMOs? The more, core crops stuff? that are genetically modified are corn, canola, uh, soy, sugar beets, um, a little bit of crookneck squash, um, alfalfa, and Hawaiian papaya, almost all Hawaiian papaya. And cotton. Oh wow. And cotton as well. Yeah. And more. Okay. In, so in the corn, the you're going with corn syrup, which is in high mm -hmm. fructose corn syrup, which is in everything. tons of food. Soy is in everything. Yeah. Because these crops are the core um, crops that are genetically modified, over 85% of prepackaged foods on grocery store shelves contain some form of genetically modified organism, whether it's through the soy, like soy lecithin, and, um, or corn through uh, corn syrup, like you mm -hmm. said, or corn starch. Um, literally hundreds of products are made out of those um, crops so it ends up they end up as a byproduct in almost all prepackaged food on store shelves okay so some countries are really picking up on this saying no to GMOs they don't want them um, have they done a lot of research or has there not been enough research which is do you know which it is both if, both both okay <laughs> um, it, I'll speak to our country, um, the FDA requires that the industry who creates the product do the research and submit the research to the FDA. So the FDA is looking at the industry's own research as mm -hmm. their basis for approval. Um, the, the FDA says that it's up to Monsanto or, or the, the um, industry, Monsanto being a leader in the industry, um, to test their product for human safety. Monsanto says it's up to the FDA to test their product for human safety and that they have no um, inclination to test it. And um, so it ended up never being tested for human safety, partly because of a policy that was written actually by a former Monsanto employee who went to work for the FDA at, to write the policy of substantial equivalence, which means that the food is substantially equivalent to its natural um, counterparts and therefore not subject to testing. After Michael Taylor left that position with the FDA, he went back to work for Monsanto as an executive and he was recently reappointed uh, by the Obama administration as the head of the FDA. You see that a lot now with corporations that they mm -hmm. kind of drift back and forth between running corporations and then being appointed by, um, you know, in dif different positions mm -hmm. in the US government. But as to your 
And going back to the policy of substantial equivalence, mm -hmm. um, they claim that they're one and the same. Um, and in fact, the industry also claims that we've been modifying um, plants and seeds or, or the DNA of our crops for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. But in reality, they are not substantially equivalent. Um, what a GMO is, is they have inserted foreign DNA, like a, bacter a bacteria or a virus, into the DNA of the seed which will then make, um, say, corn, for example, um, resistant to Roundup. And so they're called Roundup-ready crops because the whole entire field can be sprayed with Roundup and everything will die except for the um, GMO, the genetically modified crop. Mm -hmm. And um, no one's been inserting foreign DNA into our plants for thousands of years. It's only been happening uh, since 1992, actually. Wow. So they are very, very different. Yeah, yeah. And so the reason they do this, um, genetically modified, and then offer the Roundup, can you go into a little bit about that, why the industry is doing that? Well, Monsanto makes Roundup. Mm -hmm. And so when they're selling crops that are resistant to Roundup, um, they profit on both ends. Monsanto, like Jenny said, is the leading um, biotech uh, corporation. When you look at genetically modified foods, foods they own about 80% of GMOs, or 90% actually of GMO seed. Wow. And there's about five other um, industries or companies that are, you know, in that little 10%. Mm -hmm. But um, Monsanto is the leader. There is more, there's more coming though, and the other main type of genetically modified foods that are already in our uh, food supply are crops that have been modified so that they express their own pesticide. So, um, those are called BT crops, and they took bacteria from Bacterial thuringiensis, which is a soil dwelling bacteria, and um, they've inserted that gene into the crop so that the crop itself becomes a pesticide. At this point, the crop has to be registered with the EPA as a pesticide, and that is true for corn, and that is true for, um, I think it's BT cotton that we have. Um, these crops express their own pesticides. Wow. So it's interesting, we have to wonder, you know, what's the benefit for the consumer? There really are none. Mm -hmm. um, what's the benefit for the farmer? These crops are not intended to have um, increased yields or higher nutritional value. They're just intended to resist these herbicides or to actually be a pesticide. Um, and what's actually happening now is that we're getting um, pests and weeds that are resistant to these strains and um, we're now getting super weeds and super pests. So the technology, you know, is not actually working. In response to that problem, the industry then, um, they're trying to introduce a corn now that's both BT and Roundup resistant. Mm -hmm. Or um, the new one that they're trying to come up with is crops that are resistant to 2,4-D because the Roundup has limited ability to fight these Roundup resistant weeds now. So they're constantly upping the ante. It's constantly looking for the next chemical fix to mm -hmm. the problem that they created. Because nature's gonna always try and evolve in right. order to survive. Right, Okay. and, and the, the way Roundup works was recently explained to me very well. Um, when you spray, there are soil uh, dwelling bacteria in the soil um, that can be harmful to weeds. And it isn't because the weeds have built up an, a resistance to those organisms. When you spray a weed with Roundup, the Roundup doesn't kill the weed, but it does make it so that its immune system can't fight off those bacteria in the soil anymore. And it gives, provides an opportunity for that bacteria to then kill the weeds. So what if that, I don't know, I'm just supposing, you know, we're taking that into our system. What if our system all of a sudden had a weakened immune system because of that and it couldn't fight off certain things in our environment? Well, Roundup, we're certainly mm -hmm. being exposed to a huge amount of Roundup. The sales for Roundup have um, exponentially increased. One of the benefits of this technology that the industry will say is that it's um, reduced chemicals. Um, and that might be true for an individual farmer. Maybe they're mm -hmm. using less, but as a as an area, we're being um, exposed to way more. In fact, the uh, U.S. Geological Survey in, was conducted in Mississippi where they tested the rain and the streams and the air, and all of them had Roundup in it. 
And so mm -hmm. during growing season, when all of our farmers are spraying, and we are surrounded by Roundup Ready corn, and we're surrounded by Roundup Ready beets. And so when they're all spraying Roundup, um, we're drinking it yeah. realistically. It's in yeah. our rain, it's in our air, it's in our water. And Roundup has been um, proven to have adverse health effects. Um, there's links now to birth defects, there's links to neurological disorders, and um, so the Roundup issue on its own, GMOs aside, the Roundup issue is, is a big issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's inserted into the DNA of these crops, so we are consuming um, Roundup. You know, if you're eating GMOs, you're definitely getting a good dose of Roundup in more than one way. Yeah, so you're eating it and then you're getting it in your water supply as well. And animals yeah. are eating it. They, mm -hmm. Because farmers will say, well, we're using this, it, it, you know, it's, it's for animal feed. So the BT corn or the Roundup Ready corn, it's for animal feed. And, mm -hmm. But what, what happens is when the animal eats it, um, it becomes part of their tissue. Mm -hmm. and, and then when we consume the animal that has been eating the the genetically modified organisms, we get it through that way too. Yeah. So. Wow. So, and this is global in, in scope. I know you guys are more focused on what's happening here in Idaho, but um, do you want to talk a little bit about um, well, it's the really, global perspective? Yeah, it's really interesting. Actually, 50 countries around the world have either banned genetically modified foods or have labeling laws. Take the European Union, for example, um, because they have labeling laws, there are virtually no GMOs on, on their marketplace because mm. consumers won't eat them. And yet an average of about 80% of Americans have never heard the term GMO, which is interesting when you look at some of these stories. Um, Jenny and I were talking about this earlier. Uh, in the wake of the Haiti earthquake, mm -hmm. Monsanto, the leading biotech industry, donated uh, 475 tons of GMO seed mm -hmm. um, during this, you know, crisis. 10,000 Haitian farmers burned every last seed while chanting "Long live the native maize." They understand that um, GMOs can cross pollinate into their crops yeah. and actually reduce the biodiversity of our seed supply, mm -hmm. and um, they're, then they'll be dependent on buying these seeds every year because a lot of them yeah. terminate after the first year. They'll be dependent on buying expensive herbicides. They'll be dependent on the U.S. for um, their seed supply. And so these third world countries um, are very well aware of the implications of, of GMO uh, crops. Yeah, given, I guess, the history, um, hasn't there been a lot of dependency in the past and certain countries have realized um, how detrimental that actually is? Especially when this, yeah. when the company owns patents on these seeds, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that speaks that that goes back to the whole issue of whether they're significantly equivalent or not, mm -hmm. because U.S. patent law requires that something be completely unique in order to be patented, mm -hmm. and so these seeds are patented, yet they say yet <laughs> they're s significantly equivalent. <laughs> um, so, different parts of our yeah. government are having different conversations. Yeah. Um, but the 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 thing is that globally, they definitely there is a global awareness where the U.S. is a little bit behind, um, mm -hmm. and and there has been research done. There's animal research that shows that there's potential problems. Um, there's enough research by scientists worldwide, and even FDA's own scientists cautioned and said we need human safety studies on these. Um, but because these companies are so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and have such an influence on our representatives and on our regulating agencies um, that was never done. But I think the fact that, like Leslie said, over 50 different countries have either banned or labeled GMOs, um, mm -hmm. and that speaks that speaks to our our lagging behind. Mm 